Hello from Five Boys and Girls. Welcome. Today I would like to start talking about the chapter ten point two trigonometric trigonometry in three dimensional solids. I would like to say the original topics of this chapter is not called trigonometry in three dimensional solids. So you can turn over your book and then you can see the words angles and lines in three dimensional figures. But I would like to say is that okay? I don't want to use this name because this name. Uh, is not actually what you need to learn in this session because if you just want to know the angles and lines in three-dimensional solids or even in three-dimensional space, you have already learned in form three. But in DSC, the means that sign in DSC, you need to also calculate the things within okay the three-dimensional space of three-dimensional solids. So why do I say trigonometry in three-dimensional solids? This is what I want to say. And as I mentioned, okay, all the things, that means the angles, line, or even the plane in the three-dimensional space, you have already learned in form three. So in order that you can use trigonometry to solve the problem, you need to recall what you have learned in form three. So I think that today's lesson, I will first talk about what you have learned and what you should remind yourself and you, you you should be careful about this and the second is we go through some example to see how should we use trigonometry to solve the problem so first of all i would like you to go to the chapter 10 for zero take a look on the review and see again okay what okay what we need to remember first of all you can see that the first one okay we will talk about the distance between a point and a line so you have to understand is that if I say between this and point and a line, so what I meant I remember recorded about this is that you have to remember the word distance. Distance, okay, if you still remember what I say, it always refer to the word shortest. Because when we talk about distance, we want to make the shortest path between the two objects, no matter point to point or point to line or even another things that you will learn later. So you have to remember the word shortest. So also you have to remember the Keyword is that when you have the shortest, you have to work perpendicular, just I mentioned here. So you can always see if I want to say distance, you should have the right angle. So this is the idea you should always keep in mind, okay, when we want to say distance. So this is the first thing. And the second thing is the distance between a point and a plane. So before I want to talk about this one, so I would first of all to talk about if I have a line and plane also. That means that if I have the line versus plane, so how should we do? So when we talk about the three dimensional, so sometimes we have to recall something which is called a plane. So you can just imagine that a plane is just like the flat ground or the horizontal ground that you are standing, okay, you are standing at, okay, so we call the plane, okay? So uh, I think I don't think that I have to talk very, very detailed about what's a plane in core because you don't need actually to learn so many things here. But just you have to remember is that you just imagine that you have the horizontal ground, so we call this a plane. Okay, then how can we say the relation between the line and the plane? So you can just imagine that you have a line in the three-dimensional space, for example, something like this. Then you can always produce the line. That means that you make the line longer until the line may somewhere else intersect the plane at the point. Just like when you fold the javelin, okay, and the javelin drops to the ground, so we will say okay the line and the plane may intersect at a point just like this okay but now i would just like you to understand you said how can we say a plane and a line is somewhere somewhere like perpendicular so you should think that about the perpendicular means that now if i have the line okay drops something like this so we will call perpendicular but actually it is not easy okay to just say this way is perpendicular because you can see the left hand one and the right hand one. Uh, you, you may just think they are the same because you just have the line and the plane intersect at the point like here. But how can we actually say the line is perpendicular to the plane? We can always say that now, from the intersection point between the line and the plane, you can draw another line, not only one, but maybe lines on the plane. For example, on the flat ground, you put another line that crosses the intersection point. If the line you have drawn with the original line makes the right angle, for example, something like this, then we will call this one perpendicular. But do remember not only one right angle, because if you have drawn another line on the plane, something like here, you should also guarantee that this one would be also right angle. That means that you should have 
at least two of the lines that are not parallel to each other which also passes through the necessary one to make right angle then we will say this one is actually perpendicular but actually okay you may just surprising that oh mr wong you, you, so if i have shown the third line here so can i guarantee this one is also right angle the answer is surely yes but i don't think that i have to talk very many things about here in core okay because it's not easy to understand by the way so just remember is that if i have such relation then we will say the line will become perpendicular to the plane okay to the plane so if you have no problem about this concept then we can go back to talk about what's the meaning of the distance between a point and a plane so the distance between a point and a plane just like that now if you have a point which is not on the plane in somewhere else so how can we say the point and the plane would make the perpendicular or make the relation the relation is just like that now you can imagine there is a line okay which is perpendicular to the plane something like this then if I think about I move the line to make this line crosses the point P okay then the, the, the point P okay the line crosses the point P then you can see this line will also make another intersection point then we will call this point for some of the, the books say P pi would call the okay projection projection of the point P on the plane so you have to also understand is that the word projection this one is a very very important word in three dimensional space projection okay that means that it's just like okay if you think this one in the real life you can just imagine that now you have an object and then you have the horizontal ground you release this object okay through the gravity then the object would drop down something like vertically but how can we say vertically so it should become the path of the object going down to the plane so we just say this one it's just like you have the line perpendicular to the plane in the same direction okay so we call it okay the projection so do remember the very important word that you have learned in form three and also you have to remember here we will say that the point okay this one so i just erase the line to let you see clearly this one this one this one yes so we will say that p okay when it drops on the plane to get the point p prime then we will say the 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 point P pi, there's the point you make. It's called the projection of P on the plane. For example, the plane now we call pi, so we say the P pi is called the projection of P on pi. Okay, and also we will say that this one, okay, this one, okay, this this is okay, this is okay. It it, it should be perpendicular to the pi because you will say you have to make you will make the right angle here. Okay. But do remember is that besides the word projection, okay, of a point on the plane, sometimes we will also say that P pi is the foot of perpendicular. It's the foot of perpendicular of a point. For example, here the foot perpendicular of P on pi. Okay, so we can also something like the foot of perpendicular. That means the 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 point, okay, that drops to the plane. Okay, so you have to remember this word also. Okay, then we actually because you have got the perpendicular line, so we will say the distance between the foot and the original point would be called distance. So this is the very important thing. Okay, try to get it first because I don't think this one is easy, but try to get it first. Then now I would like you to take a look to see the third point. In the third point, we will talk about the projection of a straight line in a plane. So this one I think that I have to combine with number five to talk to you, which is called the angle between the straight line and the plane so if i want to talk about this scenario now you can just imagine that this time i'm not drawing the perpendicular line but this time i want to draw the line something like this just like you fold the draft in okay something like this it is not perpendicular because you think that this one is not vertical then you can see that you should have the intersection point for example here then now, if I want to say the relation between this line and the plane, then what we can do is to first of all, to take any point except the initial point on the line. For example, I say this point is called A, and for example, I say this point is B, uh, it's P like this. Then now, you, because you can see the point A is on the red line, but if you get take away the red line, you can see the point A is actually a point outside the plane. Then you can still draw a distance from A 
okay, vertically, oh sorry, it should be perpendicular towards the plane, using the idea we just talked about. And for example, I say this one is called A prime. That means that it's just like you have a line, okay, which makes a right angle, the perpendicular to every line on the plane. So because as I say every line, it means that if the P and A prime have joined a line, it is also a line on the plane, then you should have this one right angle. Because we say A and A prime, so this one I should, I the A and A prime are actually the pairs, okay? One is the original form, one is the projection of the full perpendicular. So you can see that you have created a right angle triangle. So on this right angle triangle, then we would define, that means that we set this angle, which is called the angle A, P, A prime. This angle will become the angle, okay, between, okay, angle between the line and the plane. Okay, so this is the idea of the number five. And also you have learned in form three, okay, so it's just a recall. Besides of this, then you have to also understand is that we will say, this line PA, this one. Okay, yeah, if this line, if you consider this right angle triangle, is the hypotenuse. Then we will say that the horizontal length, which is this one, okay, will become the projection of PA on the plane. That means that I can also say that PA prime is the projection. Okay, projection of PA on the plane. So this one, if you use the real life scenario to think about it, just like that, if you have a rod or if you have a, a long stuff here, then if the sun or the sunlight on the, on the sky shine on the ground, then you can see the shadow, the shadow on the ground will become the projection of the original, original stuff. Okay, so actually the projection is just like the shadow. When the sun is on the top, you shine, shine downward. Okay, so this is the shadow. Okay, so it is called a projection. So you can also see that the concept about the projection and also the angle between straight line and the plane would give you the the scenario like this. So you have to remember. And then the fourth one, angle between two straight lines. So this one is easy to understand, but practically we have to learn more. So we will go to the example later. And then the last one is called the angle between two planes. So this one, okay, actually, okay, you have another perspective, another view to see if you have learned M2, if you if you learn M2. But do remember is that in core, you need to learn about this one. So for core, you need to get the idea is that how can we define the angle between planes? So we say that in order to define angle between planes, first of all, we assume that the plane can intersect. That means that even the plane, one is the plane is just like here, another plane is just like here. But this one is maybe in the air, okay? But you can just imagine that you can elong the plane longer, somewhere like this. So I cannot draw very, very, very good here. So I will just try to let you imagine that the plane has elonged to make somewhere like this. It's just like when you turn over your book, okay? The Okay, the back of the book, okay, the back of the book or the, the pages of the book would meet at the back of the book here like this. So we'll call the plane intersect. So you can see that in general, two planes would intersect at a line. So we will call this one, instead of the point of intersection, we will call it the line of intersection. So this concept you have also learned in Form 3. But please keep in mind is that when we say plane and plane, we have the line of intersection. So after you have got the line of intersection, so what we need to do is that now we have to draw a perpendicular on each of the plane towards the line of intersection. For example, for the green plane here, I'm drawing the blue line to represent this one is perpendicular. So you may say, oh, Mr. Wong, do I need to draw the line longer? The line is how long is not important because what we want to do is just we have to say there is a line that can make perpendicular to the line of intersection and this line is on the plane. No matter on the green one or on the black one, now I'm drawing in the red. 
So after that, then you take these two lines together. After that, then you take these two lines together to meet at a point. For example, something like this. Then we will say that at this point, you can make an angle by these two perpendiculars. For example, now you have make this angle, so we will call this one is called the angle between the two planes. So you may not understand what I'm talking about because I'm not showing you the practical example. But don't worry, I will show you, then you will get more understanding about this. But just we have to remember is that, as I mentioned, for some you are studying M2, you can do this one in another aspect. So please wait for me when we go to the to the further session about the, the three-dimensional so solid, especially when we talk about chapter 12, the three-dimensional phase. Okay. So I uh, just want to remind you is that actually, okay, the concept okay about projection and also the plane angle between bank will be also very important in M2. Okay, but most of you you should remember what you've learned in Form 3. So please try to understand clearly about the C part relation among points, straight line and planks number one to six. Okay? So this is the first thing I would like to tell you. Then the second thing I would like to tell you is that practically how can we deal with the calculation of the things? So do remember is that in chapter ten point two the the questions would be easy. Why? Because chapter ten point two focuses on talking about if you are given a three dimensional solid, no matter a uh, prism, a uh, cube, a uh, tetrahedron, and other okay upright or other solid figure, then what you have to do is to see the relation between the pawn, the line, and the plane, just like the faces between them, and then you find their meshes, no matter the length or angles. Okay, so now I would like you to take a look on example five to see what's going on. Now you can see there's a curve, and now you can see. In this curve, there are two lines given, BF and BE. Very important because the question is asking you to find the relation between BE and BF. But you have to be careful about these two lines. Now, if you see the line BF, which is this one, then you have to understand is that this line actually is a line lying on the faces that that is the face facing to you, which is A, B, G. F this square. That means that you have to understand is that this line is actually on the face which is facing to you. But you can also see that in this question we want to focus on another line which is called the line EB. But you have to use your imagination that EB is actually a line which is not beyond to any square faces in the curve because you can see that the EB B is here and the E is here. So you can see these two points are not both lying on a same square. For example, you can see FB original line falls on the square ABGF. So we will say the line is actually on this square plane. But you can see that the point B and point E always in different squares. So you will see that this line is actually not beyond to any X of uh, six faces of the curve, so we will say the line is something like in the air. Okay, so you have to decide between these two because the calculation between these two are totally different. Okay, so you should keep in mind. Now you can see in this question, you have to find one. You have to find the angle between the line EB and FB. So this question is very easy because if you are given the names of the line, and also you can see the common labels between the two lines so you should see the angle should have should be located at the common label that means that the angle you need to find should be something like angle b but what should be the letter legs it should be another letter that contains that contained in the in the lines e b f b so you should have e b f that means that what you need to do is to find this angle okay but do remember is that because this angle Okay, this angle does not belong to any plane. Why do I say? Because the line BE does not belong to any plane. So the angle also. That means that this one, I will make the name called the angle in the air. Just like in Chinese called Leng Hong. That means that the angle is not actually on one of the planes. Okay, 
in the figure. So if you have such a scenario, then if I really want to find the size of this angle, then what you can only do is to focus on the triangle. That means that the technique of always doing this one is that if you want to find the angle, say the EBF, and you know this angle is the angle in the air, that means that you cannot just rely on using the faces to find it. So what you need to do is to focus on each triangle. What's the mean each triangle? For example, the name of the angle is called EBF. So you focus on triangle EBF. So this is your technique. And also you have to understand is that when you focus on this triangle, what you can only use is the cosine formula. The reason is very simple. It is because you, you have to find the angle in this something like in the air triangle. So you cannot find the an angles inside this triangle, otherwise you can solve the problem. Okay? So usually we will say that how do we say use the cosine formula? Because instead of finding angle, it is much more easier to find the lengths of the side. Why? Because you know that if I want to say the triangle EBF, so I may try to find all the lengths of this triangle, for example BF. But BF is on the square face, it's very easy. Then you can use five regular freedom to find. EF actually you don't need to find because it's just only a side of a curve. It's given to be one CF. The last one would be the BE. But you know that BE is the main diagonal of the curve. That means that if you think about this main diagonal, just like if you consider what, so you can consider the ED and the line DB to make the right angle triangle like this. But you have you understand you understand how to find DB because you can take the bottom plane ABCD to use the variable to find BD first. Then on this right angle triangle, you can also find the length EB by using variable That means that you use variable twice, then you can still find the DB. So what you can do is that now, if you want to find the angle in the air, focus on each triangle. And how do you focus it? Then you have to find all the legs of this triangle. And then the last, use the cosine formula to find the angle. So this is one of the techniques that you need to use practically in three-dimensional problem. Keep in mind. Besides of this technique, okay, so you can also see the book show you the answer. So I would not talk very detail. Now, I would like you to take a look on the example 6. Now, this time I want to find two things. First of all, I have to focus on the line B, which is this one, and the plane A, B, C, D. So this one is rather easy because now if I say the plane A, B, C, D, so you can imagine that now the plane A, B, C, D just like on the flat one. Then you just chop a line just like you fold the draft line on the, on the flat plane like this. Then what you need to do is to think about what I said in the third, the number three point, number five point when we do the recall, is to draw the projection. Okay, you should draw the projection or draw the perpendiculars, okay, to form the right angle triangle. So in this question, it's easy to know which is the right angle. Why? Because you can see the plane is the yellow one. And also you can see that this is right angle as well as this one. So why do I know? Because you know that E dot CF is a rectangle. So you have the two right angles. So once you have got two right angles, then you can easily to know that the D should be the projection. Okay, so you can easily to know that the D should be the projection of E on the plane ABCD. So this is the fact that you can see. So after you have got the projection, okay, the projection point, so you can form the right angle triangle because E, you form, you have the projection D, and B is the intersection point between the line EB and the plane. So this three point can make you form a right angle triangle. Here like this. Then you can use five film to finish all the problem. So you can see the solution will also write in such a way like this. Do remember, just like before, you don't need to write so many reasons to say, oh, why you have right angle, why you can find the length by using five No, you, what you need to do is just you need to state, okay, which length is which size is how, how long or which angle is how large. Just very easy. Okay, you don't need to write many reasons here. So this is part A. Besides the part A also I would like you to take a look on the on the part B. So this one is a little bit not easy to understand. Because now if I want to find B C F and E B then you have to use your imagination is what is going on. Because you can see at this time the B C F is a triangle. Okay, it's a right angle triangle. 
And now we say the light meets the right angle triangle. But this is not easy to find. Why? Because if you have the right angle triangle instead of a rectangle, so you cannot draw the plane. Okay, you cannot imagine that the plane flat is a rectangle. So you may imagine that the plane is something like this. Okay. But do remember is that the plane drawing like a triangle is no difference at all that you think about originally you have a flat ground and on this flat ground you have a flat triangle no matter the triangle is right angle or any triangle like this that means that you can just imagine that the triangle can be extend to become a rectangular plane okay then you can still think about that this one if i have drawn and put i may let this time the c okay the c is here the b is here according to with this one c b and f is just like you put it flat down that means that align the f down on the on the ground just like you topple the object okay towards the the this direction okay then you can see the triangle something like this then you can think about that what should be e b so you can see the e b may this time erect something like this why why do i know it should be something erect like this because you can see that if i have marked this point is the point e in the figure you can see there's a line join e and f like this but this line is a very important line why because you can see this line actually makes right angle why do i know because you know that if i have drawn the light something like this okay i i try better Yeah, so this one is E and then this is a line. Then you can easily see that the angle EFB should be right angle Y. Because you can refer back to the original figure is that EFB is actually an angle on the rectangular inclined plane. Even it is inclined going downward, but it is made by rectangle as shown. So you know that this one should be a right angle. So this right angle is going somewhere into this one. On the other hand, you can also see that the EFC. So where is the EFC? EFC is here inside. So I use another color. For example, I use a green one. EFC. This time it becomes the angle corresponding here. Then you can see this one is also right angle because it belongs to another rectangle plane, EFCD. EFCD. So you can see you have two right angles. Then you can guarantee that this one is a perpendicular line towards the plane, which the triangle uh, BCF belongs to. So you can see I'm drawing like this, but actually you can just think about this triangle is extended like the black pen I'm drawing. Then you can see the scenario something like this. And also you can see that what you have will become the, the perpendicular and right angle triangle here, which you can see the right angle triangle you can consider will be BF. Because you know F is the foot of perpendicular of E, that just means the point going downward and the B is the intersection, so BF will be what you need to find. That means that in doing the part B, if I want to find the angle between BE and BCF, this plane, then you know that the angle, which is this one, should become the answer B, which is the angle what? So this one should be EBF. So this is also one of the difficulty you may face, is that you may lead to, first of all, to locate what should be the things you find to represent your answer. Because in three-dimensional problem, we always don't show you to find which specific angle or specific length you need to understand what you need to find from the sentence so this is a very very important thing you need to learn but try to understand because i think that this one is not easy to understand okay so this is the second example now you can also see the third example like this so i will not go very very deeply because i think that you can try or next time okay i talk i tell you more if you don't understand okay in example 7 also you can see a and b okay so you can see for a and b you may need to use some other formulas to help you find for example now if i want to find d e so what you need to do is that now you have to locate d is here and you have the information about a dot e why because if i draw the a dot e flat like in this direction then you can see the angle given at a is 65 degrees here and also you can see because it's a right tri tri triangular prism, it means that every cross section should have the same dimension or same size. That means that you can guarantee that AE, okay, AE and A dot are both one meter. 
that you can easily see the triangle profile shoe s a s then you can use cosine formula to let you find d e okay that means that sometimes when you see the three dimensional breakdown how can you use trigonometry to solve the problem is that you can draw out the faces that you are considering and then try to see whether you can see this face representing a triangle then you see what information in this triangle then use the suitable formula to find your answer for example you can say 7a i can use cosine formula directly then you can find de and you actually as i just, as I just said you don't need to explain why you know a e and a dot are one meter just like here you just need to stay and you don't need to explain actually okay and then for the past c once again you can see b dot and b e so you can easily to see this one should be angle in the air because you can see this the angle why do i know because you can see b is a common point and D and E are the other points that make you make the angle, so we have the angle DBE. Okay, so this one is not difficult, also. Okay, but uh, some of you may think difficult. The last thing, okay, before I give you the classwork is that the part example eight. Now, if I want to consider the angle between two planes in this scenario, for example, if I say now the plane is the VAB, which is this triangle, and then the bottom plane ABCD. So for doing this problem, as I mentioned, so what you need to do is to first of all to locate where is the line of intersection. So you can easily see that this time the line intersection will be AB, which is the intersection line between the two planes in part C. Okay. And then the next thing is that now you have to think about what perpendicular line you can draw. But you can understand is that for the yellow triangle, which is the triangle VAB or VBA, we are talking about. We are talking about you can see this triangle is a special triangle because this triangle is an actual triangle so how do i know because i know that the bottom okay okay may uh, i know that this one okay is a right pyramid so you should know the right pyramid should provide you all the slant height including va and vb is the same because of right pyramid so you have to guarantee this important thing so if you can't remember the right pyramid so please refer to your form report okay then because you understand it is a, a short triangle it means that once you have drawn the perpendicular you can also draw passes through the vertex to make perpendicular bisector because this is the property of a triangle so usually i may draw the the right angle like this and gives you bisect the length a b okay the length a b then on the other hand you can see the bottom a b c d is a rectangle that means that this time I draw the rectangle to see what is going on. Now, A is here, B is here, and then C and D like this. As we said, that now you have created the midpoint of AB when you draw the perpendicular on this other triangle. So I may simply let this point is M. That means that now you have the point M on this rectangle like this. For example, I say these two in length, the same, so you have this one. Then for drawing this right angle is also very easy to, to know because what you need to do you can just draw the right angle to make also bisect for rectangle. Okay, for rectangle you can also draw the same like this. So you can see that now you can also draw the line like this. Then you can see that for this for these two line you can easily locate the angle because you can see that the angle you need to find should be the angle this one which I can say this one is called the VMO in this part. But how do we do it? So actually it's also very easy because you have want to find this angle so I can also think to use the height of the right pyramid which is this one with the red and blue line we drawn to form five sphere or use a cycle sign to do. So this one I think that you can try to read by yourself. Uh, practically I would like to say that okay there are many many problems okay even in the example nine so example this one i think that is the most difficult one that i want to like to talk to you if i have this time two triangles for example you have the triangle vb and also i have the triangle vbc so this time both are both are what so you can see both are triangles okay both are triangles here okay but just you have to understand a very 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 important thing is that now in this scenario now how i draw the perpendicular so this time if i draw the perpendicular i may need to draw like in this way but you have to understand the most important thing is that now 
if you have the right uh, sort of triangle, okay, you draw the perpendicular, you can make bisect. But this time, because the line intersection is VB instead of the bottom AB or BC, that means that if you have drawn the perpendicular from A, you may not bisect the VB. That means that in your picture, okay, in your picture, it may be something like in this way. I say this one is VAB. And this time, if I draw the perpendicular towards the line VB, which is this one, then you can see at the right angle you have drawn, the perimeter you have drawn, may not make these two lengths are the same. Maybe one longer, one shorter. But you know that the VAB triangle, VB triangle are congruent. So by symmetry, you can make the same part and make all the things the same. For example, these are the same, these two are the same, and then so on. So you can see that other than that, then you can locate the angle because you can see the boat will show you that the angle are just actually formed by the two perpendiculars. For example, as I mentioned that you have a line here, you have a line here. So you can see the angle will become somewhere else at N and N is somewhere point on VB. So this one is also the angle in the air. Okay, so you can easily see this angle is also angle in the air. So because it's angle in the air, it means that the last, you have to take out this triangle. That means that you have to take out the triangle A and C. And try to see whether I can find A N, N C and also A C to make the angle found by using cosine formula. So I find that today I would not, not like to talk so deeply about each of the example because if I told you so many things here, you will feel very, very confusing. You will feel very, very confusing. So even the the example 10, I think that uh, you can read by yourself. But before I end the clip, okay, I would like to give you a very, 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 very brief understanding about the add-ons that you may not need to use in DSC, but I think that it may be sometimes useful. It's called the theorem of free perpendicular, some such anyway. So I, I will not tell you this one so deep today, because later when we go to 10.3, I can give you more examples to talk about this one deeply. But just I would like you to understand is that sometimes in the film of film because it's talking about the scenario is that now if you have a line and a plane and the line is perpendicular to the plane, okay. So first of all, you make a right angle here, okay. You make the right angle here. Then now if I have another line which is called L, okay. For example, the blue line L, okay. The line is called L. But this line is not passing through the A, which is the the foot of perpendicular P. Now you can see that the line arrow and the pawn A on the plane can use the distance between the pawn and line to draw a perpendicular. So I say this perpendicular would make the pawn B on L. So we will say that now, if you have these two right angle, we have the relation is that the opaque line FB, okay, PB, sorry, not, P, not FB, PB, would make right angle at L. But do remember is that this time this line is not really permitted to the plane. But this PB, it just prepared to the line L. What does it mean? It's just like that if the line is vertically like this on the plane, okay, on the plane, you make every right angle here. But if you slightly oblique the line, okay, then you can see this line is not prepared to the plane. But still, it may prepare to the line on the plane. For example, if I have a line like this, okay, then this blue line or this blue plane, just like I think a line, and this uh, uh, this metal plan, okay, like this, you have a right angle. Even you make the light slightly downward, okay, you still make the right angle like here. Even this, this, this one may not make another light. For example, this time I make the light like this, but still you can make some of the lines. For example, this one still makes right angle. So it is what the film of film they want to bring to you. That means that if you have the black one and the green one, you get the yellow one. Okay, so this is a film of fever particulars. So you have also the converse version. You mean it means that this time if I have black and yellow, I can also get the green. So this is called the converse of it. So both of them may be very used, maybe sometimes useful for us to solve some three dimensional problem. But I think that today I will not like to talk deeply about this. So let me go through this one later. So uh throughout the uh the recall and the brief understanding about how to use geometry to solve the three dimensional problem, I would like you to try to see whether you can complete these eight questions. If you can do them, I can go further. If you cannot, I think that I should spend more time to talk about this one. 
Okay, so try to do these eight questions. Ask us if you have any problem. Thank you and goodbye.